Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so excited that you are joining us today on Facebook. My name is Lanissa James and I serve as one of the educational resource specialists here at HSLDA. And I am so excited to be alongside the beautiful Dr. Rochelle Somerville. How are you Rochelle today? How are you? I am so good. I'm excited about this topic today. Yes. Well, today, Rochelle and I are going to be talking about record keeping. To keep or not to keep is the question, right? A guide to documenting your homeschooler's journey. And would you agree we all kind of gather a whole lot of things? We're going to just kind of help you sort through um, some strategies to organizing your homeschool record keeping. So no matter where you're joining us from, we want you to just put it in the chat. Tell us where you're logging in from and Maybe how many kids do you homeschool? What grades are they? What ages are they? Because wouldn't you say, Rochelle, that makes a big difference, right? Are they high school students? Are they elementary students, middle school students? Wouldn't you agree that the paper buildup is different from year to year, right? Absolutely. That makes a huge difference. <laughs> yes, yes. So we invite you. We want this to be an interactive um live for you today so that you can connect with us, you can share. So feel free to post right in the chat. Our team behind us will uh, help us see your questions and we're just excited to be here. So before we get started, I want to um, point you to our website. We have a wonderful website. It's hslda.org and teaching. Uh, there's a specific link we want you to go to www.hslda.org teaching hyphen my hyphen kids forward slash record keeping. There's such an array of information that will support you no matter what age your student is. So let's get started, Rochelle. Tell us a little bit about you and your homeschool journey. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, I'm excited to be here. Um, as Lanissa introduced me, I am one of the educational uh, resource specialists here at HSLDA, and I've been here for nearly six years. Um, and I've been supporting the families with uh, that are homeschooling children with special needs specifically. I myself am a homeschool mother of six. My husband and I have been on this journey for 17 years. So we have some longevity in this and um, we have used different systems over the years. And I am excited to share a little bit of those nuggets with you today. So this is an exciting topic for me. Yes, this is exciting. And so I'm Lanissa James, the homeschool mom of seven. And so my husband and I are celebrating 29 years of marriage next Yay. week. And <laughs> we are so excited. And we started homeschooling. It'll be almost two decades. And we have uh, students from ages is 26 is the oldest and eight is the youngest. We're getting ready to launch our fourth student to college, and it's never a dull moment. And I will tell you, the record keeping is a big part of not just losing your hair, right, in homeschooling. You got to keep up with all the material. And so we're going to just start unpacking some pieces of record keeping. And if it's okay, Rochelle, we're going to jump right in. And I want to ask you about some of the tools you use. And we're going to talk about tools at the end. But you have a lot of children. I have a lot of children. You have different different ages. Tell me what your number one tool is that you love to use in record keeping. Oh, okay. I have multiple, as you can imagine, but um, I'm going to say one of my favorite is probably my management, my management tool, which my kids have a component of, but I also have a component of. So um, it, it outlines what they have to do. It also outlines my task. And when they finish their task, I get alerted and it actually comes right to my cell phone. So we are working like a well-oiled machine over here. <laughs> Wonderful. So explain that again. You said it's a it's an app or what is it? Um, so we have we have several tools. So um, I love the Google Classroom. The Google Classroom does this, but it um, there is there are other there are multiple apps. And listen, I'm all about free. And so um, uh, so these are all free tools you can use. But like for example, the Google Classroom. If I set up a Google Classroom, I, there have been times where I put every one of their tasks I want them to do in the Google Classroom, and as they do it and they submit it, it comes to me as uh, they've completed the task and submitted it. So something that alerts me that the task I've set out for them for the day, and it can even be a schedule, it can even have chores or anything on it that I want, but it comes right to my phone to let me know we are checking off the boxes for the day. I love it. I love it. So you seem like the techno savvy kind of mom, right? Because it's mostly hands free, paper free. Well, I guess I'm still the ancient kind of mom because we're using binders. You know, I have a binder for each kid for each year. 
Now, I will say that the binder is categorized based on subjects. So we've got our Bible, we have our reading literature, we have our math, our grammar, our science, you know, our Latin. So it's it's set up that way and each kid has their binder. And so everything is hole punched, you know, so there's some moms that have to have a laminator. I'm the mom that has to have a hole puncher because if it's not hole punched to go into this binder, I have to put it in my other file, which is called file 13 because I, I can't manage the papers, right? And then of course, if you live in a state, you know, we're gonna talk about how you really need to be connected to the law for your state. But if you live in a state like mine and yours, Rochelle, where you have to do a portfolio review, you kind of are managing paper. And so we put this system together when we first started homeschooling and we're still using the same kind of system, really just putting it into the, the binders. But I will say that recycle, reuse, um, and repurpose is important because a lot of things from year to year, you can recycle and reuse. And we try to do that um, in terms of um, subject separators, et cetera, et cetera. And that has a tendency to narrow down the amount of papers that we're using from year to year. So we're trying, we're trying, Absolutely. right? But you got it. But every mom has to figure out what works for them and make sure that they kind of keep, you know, those materials in, you know, first at hand, because when mom gets dis, you know, disoriented, the whole operation gets disoriented. Am I right? Absolutely. So we're excited that you're on. I see that we have Becky on with a four-year-old and that's exciting, right? Tur turning five, right? And just want to know how to get started. And that's important. We see North Carolina's on, two children, 14 and 15. These are different age groups. You know, she's got a Eight, an eighth grader and a ninth grader move into ninth and tenth. So people are coming in from all parts. We got Michigan on the line. We got all different states. So if you're just joining us, uh, we want we're going to be talking about record keeping. We want to know where you're tuning in from and what the ages, grades of your students are. Because I will say, uh, record keeping does change a little bit. Rochelle, you have high school students, right? You have middle school students. You have elementary school students. So all of that uh, impacts how you keep your records. So I want to ask a couple more questions. Um, how has your record keeping changed, Rochelle, from when your kid was elementary to middle and then middle to high? Would you say there's some changes? Absolutely. It, it changes significantly, of course, because when they were little, the responsibility mostly fell on me and I needed it simple. I needed it super simple. So that paper uh, organizer that you were talking about, um, I still have the elementary. And so I still use that binder for my, for my younger ones because I want them to have ownership in the things that go in the binder too. And so I allow them to pick and choose because it's not everything, but if they're samples that go in that binder. And so I allow them a hand into what goes in there, but it's a little bit different as they get older because you know, the fascination of technology. And, and by the time they're in high school, they are tech savvy. Like they are teaching me things and we are finding these tools together. It's almost like a bonding situation where they're teaching me different um, elements of different technology. But um, the really the shift really has, has transitioned to them in terms of what they need to keep, how they keep it, how it, how it stays organized. And it also helps them to become organized young adults. And so I involve them in the organizational system and what they need to keep and it helps them stay on track. And so it's a system that's kind of all fits together, but it looks very, very different than the younger ones. What about you, Lanessa? Yeah, it does look different from year to year. And I tell you, when you have high school students, middle school students and elementary students, you're kind of using all of your systems all at one time. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's, that's true. Let's add, let me ask a question. Let's jump in on the topic. What records are important to keep and how should we handle records? What records so, are important? It, well, you know, the first thing is um, there's certain records that, you, that, that certain states require. Um, and so I always say before I even answer that question for anybody, I always reference, um, you know, make sure you know that your legal, your legal requirements in your state. And so be sure that is your first stop when you are thinking about your options to keep records and the type of records you want to keep. Make sure you check with your homeschool requirements because there may be something specific, like some states require you keep a log of the hours that you homeschool. So if you're in one of those states or any state, just make sure you know that your, what your regulations are. But yes. after you've done all that, this is not an exhaustive list, of course, but here are just some ideas of some of the things we've kept, um, you know, samples. Um, the, outside of what you keep, understand that um, the information that you keep 
for your records, it paints a story, right? I always like to say that and I tell my kids, make it beautiful. You know, what do you want people to know about you from year to year? And so we paint that picture with, um, you know, books. My, I have a couple kids that love books. And so they do a lot with um, decorating and listening to the books, samples. You know, what do you want to keep? And you don't only keep the great stuff, right? So you want to keep a progression of, you know, how the kids have changed. You know, they didn't start off so great, but wow, look how they they ended up. Um, you know, some states, like I said, require attendance records. Some people do testing at the beginning or the ending of the year, uh, progress reports or any way that you track progress. Um, what about you, Linus? Or anything else that you intentionally uh, put yeah. inside that portfolio of yours? That's a good, great list that you're going through. But I love what you said about stories because ultimately you'll always have grandma or an aunt or a friend or a neighbor who comes over who wants to see some of the things that you're doing. So I love to have that whole story effect too, to say, hey, here's what I'm working on. You know, we're working on, you know, um, chemistry and physics and and here's an experiment that I did and here's what I learned and here's the periodic table and et cetera, et cetera. So no matter what it is, it's, it's kind of like a story because most of us are probably sticking with maybe probably one aspect of the subject each year, right? So you may have picked one aspect of what you're doing for science, uh, one level of math and what it entails. So I love for that whole story to kind of unfold. And I also love to see the progression of my kids' handwriting, right? You oh, know, yes, how they wrote, <laughs> what their handwriting looks like in kindergarten versus what it looks like in fourth grade. It's different. And it also shows a, a progress, you know, of how they're growing. Because when you're right in the middle of it, you don't see all of that. You just see what the paperwork looks like. And it teaches, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about special needs uh, soon, but it also teaches order operation and helping them organize their space and things like that. So I love the opportunity for kids to be participatory in the record keep keeping process. So I think that's super important. So you talked a little bit about your tools. I want to ask you a little bit of um, some more specific questions about, you know, um, workshops or receipts or things like that you're using do you keep those kind of things if they've attended a workshop or if they've um you know maybe gotten an award for piano or something like that are those is, are you keeping those things as well i do I, I i keep those because remember this is a story we're painting um and and there's always i love i love what you referenced about people coming over and wanting to see that picture because people are always fascinated with homeschool it's like what do you do like, do you do yeah. more than eat cookies during the day? Right. Yeah. And so, you know, we do. We actually do work. Right. You know, we're not always in the store grocery shopping. And so it's a it's a great way to tell that story and their accolades and the things they do, the things they volunteer for. You know, if they got an award for some type of service or an academic achievement. All of that is a part of the story. Um, and then, of course, when you allow your kids to be a part of it, that's something that they want to shine in. So there's always a section for you know, tell me more about you, not the academic part, but what, what do I know about you that's not in here? Not not anything about how smart you are or anything like that, or, you know, what you've done in school, but tell me about you. How do you own it? And so absolutely those other kinds of awards and things. And then as they get older, of course, you want to keep those things anyway for, you know, especially during high school, when you begin to highlight some of that and track some of that for maybe later on when they're, you know, at the end when they are, um, submitting to scholarships or applying to school because you don't want to wait till the end to be like, you know, it's a senior, like, what did I do? You don't want to look back. You want it already be already to be there. And so that's why I do love your idea of a binder because then you, yes. know, you just flip it open and you don't have to like search through all the electronic stuff. So there are yes. advantages of that paper. Yes. And you, you brought up a very important point about the high school resume. The high school resume tells a story and on it, you're going to be recording things like their extracurricular, you know, their volunteer service, you know, maybe awards, et cetera. And I will tell you, it's a big fog when you're in the middle of high school. Am I right? So, you know, we Absolutely. keep this, this, you know, binder, this box, if you will, it's where we keep their awards. So maybe they were at a piano recital and they placed, you know, some sort of level or got some sort of award. You forget about it later, but when you're needing it to go on your high school resume, it becomes very important. And what I love, particularly for my high school students, is I love talking about uh, how to hand someone a high school resume and their high school transcript at the same time so that they can write a letter of recommendation for, for you. 
It helps get a snapshot, if you will, of your student. And you can include sports on it. These are the things that won't go on a transcript. It's actually going to go on your high school resume. And, and I believe a lot of that starts very, very early. Maybe you're in 4-H or maybe you're a civil mm-hmm. air patrol or you know whatever the things that you're doing with your children. Um, I think sometimes as homeschoolers, we do so much with our kids that we forget to document it. And then once it's a time for us to talk about it, um, we're not as crisp because we don't remember or it never went on a piece of paper. Or how about volunteer hours, right? So if your yes. student is volunteering someplace, then you and someone says, well, how many hours? You're like, I don't know. I never counted it up. Right. So it's so important that you have these important documents all put together. But here's a question for you, Rochelle. Do you keep a separate portfolio for each kid? Absolutely. There is no other way that it could work Um, because, again, I'm going to keep saying this. I think that record keeping is all about storytelling and each individual child has a story to tell. And so even though I have six kids in my family, they're not all the same. Right. And so you want them to have some type of ownership to it. And so I want each of their individual personalities to come out. They've all got them decorated differently. You know, of course, it's standard in the front. You have their name. But I want to know, you know, when they share their their information with people, whether it be a PowerPoint with their accolades or anything, I want them to feel some pride in terms of what they have organized as their story. And so every single one of them has something different because every one of them are unique. Yeah, that's so true. So here's the most important question to you. And um, we're going to give you some resources that you can connect to find out more. But the question we hear a lot is, how long do I keep my homeschool records? Right. And we have a a resource on our HSLDA website. It's called the Essentials of High School Record Keeping. This question comes up often. Like, how long should I keep it? What would you say about this, Rochelle? How long? Well, yeah, I'm going to say that we always recommend about a three year cycle Um, that first the, the current year and then maybe samples from the previous years. But um Again, this may be something that you need to check, make sure that you don't have any state requirements. So always check what your legal requirements are, but uh, we would recommend maybe a three-year cycle if you don't have any specific state requirements. Uh, Because if you think about it, when you have multiple kids uh, and you have multiple binders, now Lonessa, how many binders do you have at this point? (laughs) Okay, because you graduated a couple, you got four going at the school and you still have littles. So how many binders is that if you have one for every year? So it can get thick. you know, but there are some things also that you want to permanently keep. Is there anything that you would say you permanently keep in your records? Yes, things like uh, test scores, if you happen to be giving your kids test scores, right? Transcripts, transcripts are important. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, uh, Perhaps you, I love having kind of like a summary of course description of what my kid is using for a particular subject. I like to keep that so I know what I use for English, right? What books I use. I want to know what literature books they read. So I kind of keep those items and maybe not have so much of the sample work. But I will also say in high school, it's important to keep samples for each year because I think the ninth through 12th grade year is the only time where you have this four-year span where every year matters, right? Um, So from your unique electives to those five core English, math, science, history, foreign language, they all kind of tie together and they tell a story. So in your high school years, it's kind of good to keep all of your high school records. Right. I know you said three, four years, but, you know, we definitely want to hit the high school record book. And so I have a high school record book for all of my kids and it just has that course description. Right. It has a little bit of, you know, how I did grades, et cetera, et cetera, so that I have what I need to put on my transcript, which is really important. Anything else you want to say about this topic? You know what? Let me address um, special needs. So if you have a child with special needs, it's a little bit different. Um, Sometimes families with special needs can be completely overwhelmed because from the very beginning, there are tons and tons and tons of paperwork that's involved in just, you know, from the moment of diagnosis. In fact, let's go back. From the moment we bring those babies home, we are giving papers and papers. You start keeping immunization records or, you know, you're tracking weight, you're tracking height, all of these things. And so fast forward to school age, now we tack on other documents if your child has accommodations or um, you've created a student education plan. Um, eva- evaluations and things like that. This is more paperwork, but it's really, really important. 
a lot of time to keep that extra paperwork because um, it, it, you want to show that progress. Again, these kids have a story too, right? And you want to show that story and it may change over time. And sometimes we are so overwhelmed that we don't see the little things that are occurring. A lot of times with families with special needs, what happens is, is that we get overwhelmed within a year because there's a lot to deal with your therapies and medical things. And, and you're still managing other kids. A lot of times is that you miss the little things, but when you keep records and document things, you see it. You know, so it's really nice to keep the records, um, keep them all together so that you can kind of look back when you have those, you know, you sneak those two minutes in, those two to five minutes in here and there. And you kind of, you kind of, um, you get, to, you paint the picture of those kids too. So you always want to make sure you are painting some type of story and giving your kids the opportunity to tell their story through whatever records that you keep. Yes, yes. And even if you're doing a lot of eclectic learning, which is, you know, maybe so, not so much structured with curriculum, but maybe you're a junior ranger and you're traveling and maybe you're keeping record or pictures of where you travel, where you what you learned um, when you were there. So there's so much eclectic learning as well. It doesn't always have to be um, structured from curriculum, et cetera. It could be things from your experience. Um, we also like to spend a lot of time with grandparents grandparents and sometimes they give you things right and so sometimes we make that part of our records in fact um one year we were working on our our family tree and turning it into a timeline you know so there are just so many things that you can do that's eclectic and that you learn along the way and don't forget about those great field trips right rochelle do you want to talk a little Absolutely. bit about field trips that's your thing Absolutely. right Absolutely. Well, yes fun. yes I, we love field trips um half of our learning um is in the house and half of it is just out in real life and so we do lots and lots of field trips we learn something and then the culminating activity to get the kids excited about doing the work in the house a lot of times is an activity a field trip and so we be sure that we document those kind of things as a part of the learning too, because it is part of that learning experience. We also love the vacation. Now I know, Lanessa, you're an RVer, you and your family, and and those are some rich experiences um, that are all part of the educational journey. And so, we are sure to capture those. And somehow, whether they go into they print them out in paper in paper form, or we make some type of electronic. Um, display of them, but somehow we capture those trips too. And we somehow, we um, a lot of times when we're going to uh, vacation and things, we're tying what we learn into those vacation spots. And so it's a great way to feed it right into your portfolio, whether you're keeping it by paper or electronic. Yes, I love that. And you know what? You could do a yearbook at the end of the year. I am definitely a keeper of all things photography. Like I can have, you know, every aspect of my life. I've got thousands and thousands of pictures. And so it could be fun to maybe go to Shutterfly and make a whole picture book, you know, of your homeschool year. These years are fleeing. They go so fast. And so mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to say, hey, um, let's just summarize what our 2023, 2024 homeschool year was like. What was the highlight? How about the sports? What sports did we play? Where did we travel? You know, what new friends did we meet? And it becomes, you know, each homeschoolers, you know, storybook. So I love that, you know. And of course, what do you do with the pictures now, right? Nobody prints out pictures anymore. <laughs> so it gives you an opportunity right. to make a book. So now you can just kind of upload it onto your account for Shutterfly and really just make a yearbook of the year. And, and what I love about that, this, this becomes a forever keepsake. And it also is such a great tool for others who are looking to homeschool, get in connection with you, want to have a conversation. And it also helps your children tell a story about their education, which is fun, right? We had the media at our house and they wanted to interview the children and the children was telling the story. And so it's great for them to uh, kind of repeat what they learn. And I bet this is great for even kids who have special needs, right, Rochelle, to be able to Absolutely. tell the story. Absolutely, and that visual piece actually helps them to tell the story because now they don't have to depend on their memory. They actually can, you know, take you through the story through pictures. And and you know, as you talk about as you talk about the memory books and things, it makes me think there are still, you know, my son, my oldest son has graduated now and he is a junior in college, but when we look back, we see the pictures of him going when we were going through the museum when he was in third grade. 
Like, so it's not even after you're old and, you know, you're sitting on the chair, the rocking chair outside, you know, just a couple of years down the line. Like Lanissa said, these years pass so fast. I literally remember learning with him when he was in kindergarten and now he's a junior in college. And so looking back on those and even showing the little, my little ones who weren't there at that time um, and letting them tell the story, you know, or, or letting them ask questions. It's, it's really powerful. It's a powerful way to even build a relationship with your younger ones um, and, and share with your other family. So I love the idea of, of kind of a photo gallery yearbook kind of idea. Yes. And let's not forget about these. And you probably know more about this, Rochelle. The digital, they have the little, I'm, I'm not an iPad user, but I know there's lots of <laughs> iPad users out there. You guys love those iPads, right? And what if you had like a digital tool of the pictures, you were just helping me with something similar to this the other day, right? Where you put all the pictures together and it goes as a slideshow, right? So if mm -hmm. you decide, Absolutely. right, that you want to, hey, I don't, I don't want to sit in the shutterfly, I don't want to print it out, but I want to create a slideshow. Talk a little bit about how you can tell a digital story about record keeping for your homeschool. Absolutely, and as you had started, you know, some of these apps now, all you have to do is upload the picture and then they literally make the display in the slideshow for you. I mean, you. I mean, it prompts you to walk you all the way through. You pick a song and you pick, um, they will put it in order based on category, based on faces, you know? So some of the technology now is pretty amazing so that you don't necessarily have to be tech savvy, but now I'm also gonna say, if you have a, a, a rising middle schooler or a high schooler, tap into their creativity because they probably know more than you when it comes to technology. And this is even without teaching them. Because I'm going to tell you, I didn't teach my kids half of the things that they know. And we are a family who does not, I, I restrict technology. So they have limited access to technology. But somehow during those times, they have figured out how the technology piece to make things really, really aesthetic. They have made some beautiful displays of their work um, and some beautiful PowerPoints. And so, and this is just by trial and error. I will give them the project and I'll say, okay, you figure it out. And so I love it. And so, so use your kids, um, use it as a learning experience. Yes. Uh, it's a great way to kind of pull it all together and take the load off of you and make it enjoyable. Yes. And with the background for me in television and film, how about make a movie? Can that, wouldn't that be fun, right? Um, you know, compare, you know, combine your still photography and your videos together and you can do an iMovie of your homeschool year. Wouldn't that be cool? People come by and you can have your graduation. We do this often. We call it a video montage of just a, a culmination of all of the things that you've done all year. And it helps you breathe. It helps you enjoy the summer better as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because you <laughs> see a, a, a summary of everything that happened. So there's so many wonderful things you can do. I have a question for you though, Rochelle. Are you ready uh -oh. for this? I'm ready. What do you do with the books? Books, right? When you have multiple kids and you know they're coming behind you, right? When you say homeschoolers, we have a lot of books. If you're a homeschooler, what do you collect? We collect books, right? So what do you do with the books? How do you organize it? Uh, now we, we, we have bookshelves and bookshelves and bookshelves. My, if you ask my husband, he would probably say, we just build another bookshelf. Okay. But I'm gonna give you another. Here. So we have bookshelves all the way to the ceiling in the basement. But um, what I try to do is I make it aesthetic. Okay. But they are, they are part of the journey. And so you don't want to get rid of them, but what we do end up doing is collapsing them into something that's more reasonable. So whereas they may be thick and just, just represent one year at some point. Um, at some point, you know, as elementary is done, we make we may combine a couple of them into a, a larger, a, a larger maybe a four inch binder. So we do collapse some of them, um, yes. uh, the binders that with the portfolios that we've kept, but we also create some of those portfolios into digital portfolios. And so we eliminate the binder altogether because at some point when you have six kids, you're gonna run out of space. Unless you, you take them. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. And you can even be a part of book swaps too, because you know, one man's rich, one man's waste is another man's riches, right? And oh, and where you're done with it, but maybe you changed your mind on a curriculum, you can team up with other homeschool moms and do a book swap. And so that books will learn just how to actually connect, you know, with other people. So I'm challenging you to make sure that you connect with other homeschoolers who actually have books who they want to share. So that's exciting. And one of the quick tools that I use is a bend. 
A bin is very important because I put all the books inside the bin and it actually, um, I categorize it, right? So I have my classical books in the bin. I have my co-op books in the bin, mm -hmm. right? Especially the ones that you're going to be using over and over again. And I don't know about you, Rochelle, when you're running out the house, you're headed to classical, you're headed to co-op, you want to be able to keep a hold of the things that you're looking for. And Absolutely. what's nice about it is that my husband, my uh, my son said, yeah, mom, we have a bin, but the bins are heavy. <laughs> but it does make it easier to get out of the house. How do you get out if you have books and several kids? I know everybody has their book bags, but if you're leading a group, how does that have work for you? You know, I'm with you. I have different organizational bins. They're all different width sizes, uh, um, you know, and, uh, and that was funny what your son said, because everything I have has wheels because, yep, it's going to get heavy. But you know what? I also have five boys. And so I'm going to let them, you can pick it up or you can roll it. Right. But I do. They're, they're organized different ways. You know, this one goes with us on Tuesday to co-op. This one comes with us. To, you know, this has to go into the car for church. I even have baskets to stay in the car for groceries, you know, so we can get it in the house and they stay in the, they stay in the car. And so the more I organize, the more I'm finding it's easier to navigate. And so I really work hard to think of an organizational system before I even pivot to do anything. And so I, we, we around here have systems after systems after systems. And we, we, it's been trial and error because some systems we figured out that we work harder to work the system than it's even worth it to use the system. And so, you know, we kind of push that one to the side and we, we come up with something else. But uh, we have not been afraid to get rid of a system and invite a new system into our lives. And so we're all about trial and error. But I think the the bins the individual bins that go separate places has worked best because then you're not shifting and and reorganizing every time you have to walk out the house so yes. i do like that idea that is so true well we can't get off this topic without talking about <laughs> transcripts because ultimately all of this culminates to an a end of a year that uh, people actually get a transcript you want to talk about transcripts Absolutely. So, of course, transcripts is for high school is just that picture of high school. Right. It's going to be it's going to be all the classes. It's going to be um, all the activity, the extra extracurricular activity, the service. Um, um, well, th this is well, I'm sorry. Let me separate those two. So you want the big picture in terms of record keeping. But the transcript itself is just the document that that highlights the accolades from your academic career. So that could be whether, you know, you were homeschooled just inside with your parents and then you took a co-op class or, you know, you may have been dual, taking some dual enrollment classes. So whatever that academic journey looks like, um, that's what your transcript would look like. And even for students with special needs, you're still going to have something that um, a lot of students are still going to have a, an equivalent transcript um, that's going to paint that picture of their academic journey. Um, the course titles are going to be something that is representative of whatever your journey looks like. So if it's a modified one, that's going to be represented in the title. But it's going to it's going to also be one single document that paints that picture. Uh, and there are other things that can go with it, like Lanissa mentioned, the extracurricular sheet that will highlight all those other bells and whistles that make you uniquely you. I love it. That's it. And and I think sometimes people get overwhelmed when they think about the transcript. We're going to have lots of more support for you on transcript. And please don't forget to consider our transcript service, HSLDA. If you go right to our website in our HSLDA store, you can get a hold of our transcript service that will help you calculate the GPA, which is so exciting. So outside of knowing the title, your, your credits and the grades, that's all you need in order to do a great transcript. And that is an important record. In fact, it's one of the most powerful gifts you can give your graduating student is a transcript, a concise record of all of their academic um, classes through high school. So this is exciting. So how many transcripts have you done so far, Rochelle? Well, let's see. So I have completed one, graduated one. The second one is graduating this year. And so we are grateful for that. Um, and I have two ninth graders. So we will, we started that, that transcript for the two ninth graders. And then I, my last two are, are still a little bit young. So I still have a little bit of time. You're, oh, Alyssa, you're on oh, mute. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
We have time for a few questions. So we're excited about your questions. So tell us where you're calling from and what kind of questions you have about record keeping. We hope this is helpful for you to actually understand what you can do with all of the homeschool papers and the record keeping that you have. Are there any questions you have for us? We see Nicole on, we see Zakia on, we see um, uh, who else? So if you have a question, please don't hesitate to post your question. We see Colleen see on from Michigan, Heather from Louisiana. You guys are coming in from all over. Becky from Missouri, Megan from Kentucky. What kind of questions do you guys have and uh, about record keeping? Anything that we've not covered? We know we briefly talked a little bit about how to organize those records. Um, there's a couple, you know, we, we just touched on um, a couple things, but there are other ways, you know, the, the digital and you can do it either digitally or you can do it by paper, which we described already. But, um, you know, as a part of this story, there's lots and lots of ways that you can that you can keep and organize your records. Some people that are more hands on, uh, some people use it like a three ring accordion binder. Uh, we talked about the photo albums. Um, we talked about some digital options. Some people actually use a homeschool planner. Do you use a homeschool planner on this, sir? Yes, I am the big on the homeschool planner. You know, I'm big on uh, putting things on paper and, you know, wrote a whole book on homeschool planning. <laughs> I think that if you get in front of it, it takes the stress away. Right. So if you decide before the kids wake up, I don't know about you, but it seems like when the kids wake up and the family gets going, your brain can't settle to what it is that you need to be doing. But when the house is quiet and you have some time to sit and plan, you can look at the act. And then you're like me, Rochelle, we have several kids. So you may have a different academic plan. Right. For each student. Right. I have a second grader, I have a seventh grader, I have a 10th grader, I have a 12th grader, and all of what we're doing can be different. So sitting down and having a plan ahead of the kids in front of you is a big deal. It's a game changer. So I challenge you to really um, spending some quiet time. And, uh, and sometimes when you plan by subjects, it makes it easy. I don't know about you, Rochelle. Mm -hmm. Do you sometimes get to the end of the year and you realize that your subjects are kind of lopsided, right? You've done a whole, whole lot in math and not as much in reading. And oh, my goodness, don't forget about history. And don't forget, did you finish the science? So sometimes it can get lopsided. So being able to have a daily planner and um, also keeping your subjects together really helps you pull together a totality and a well-rounded student, right? Do you sometimes have that trouble, right? You get to the end and... <laughs> I do, I do. And you know, what the interesting thing is that it, a lot of times what I realize it, me it meshes with my passions. You know, I, I honestly love math. And so what I, um, you know, I distinctly remember last year when I was pulling out... Um, I was pulling out trying to organize my eight-year-old and I said, well, you know, let me give him a picture of all the books he has, you know, um, that he has. And I was trying to organize his system and I realized, well, wait a minute, he has like three math, math books that I'm using. I was like, wait, wait, you know, but it wasn't until I laid it all out that, that it kind of, it, it was in my face that, you know, this is kind of lopsided. Um, but we do lots of, you know, like you said, um, the organizational piece is a lot to think about, but we do it up front. We do it up front because I realize that if I can find an organizational system that works for not only me, but the kids, then it then things will go a lot smoother during the school year. And so yeah. there's a component of our organizational systems that's for me, and there's a component that's for them. I have a planner, they have a calendar, you know, right. and so it kind of feeds into each other. And then we use lots of things in between that, you know, in the binder, there are colorful inserts, you know, um, especially if you have students with special needs, there's a little bit extra you have to do to organize. If you have anybody with um, ADHD or any executive functioning, that organizational piece is a lot, right? But but the more we can help to organize uh, ourselves and them, the better off it is. And so I do a lot um, with, you know, color inserts and labels and tabs. And I am the tab queen. Ask for a color, I have it. <laughs> you know exactly what we're in all of our texts. I love it. I see Erica's joined us. She's going to watch the replay. Yay. And I see Jessica's joined us. And yeah, she's saying a fear of not having enough and doing enough in record keeping. I think we all have that fear. And I know for us is that when we have our 
students out and about and they have their book bags. I don't know what happens to those pieces of paper inside the book bag, right? You're, you're hanging out, you're at co-op, and then you come back and you're like, well, where was the piece of paper? Or, you know, they worked on a project somewhere. So trying to preserve some of the work that they might be getting in um, their cooperative classes or, um, you know, or tutoring or tutorial, you want to keep a hold of that as well. So sending the kids out with a folder is also another system, right? Because Absolutely. if you don't have a folder or something to put it in, it just kind of gets it's all in there. I see Zakia asked us about sports. She says, How do we record keeping sports involvement? Yeah, that's a good one, Zakia. Yeah, I don't well, leave anywhere without my phone, you know. So we've yeah. got the digital, we've got the pictures. Um, but you know, it, we when it comes to high school, it's a little bit different. Um, yes. what do you think about yeah. that, Linda, sir? Yeah, so I had uh, not one, not two, not three, but four Junior Olympic gymnasts. <laughs> a lot yes. of Junior Olympic gymnasts. And then now, right now, I have a basket, two basketball players, you know, one who plays soccer. We do a lot with sports. And so, you know, I think the thing of sports is that you have to ask yourself, is your student leaning towards an NCAA career? And if so, there's a digital aspect of sports that's important because now you have to tell a story for, you know, for recruiters to find your student. So it's the same approach, but now it's now on a digital. So now you're trying to get to games and trying to keep a record, right? So you need to be very intentional if you have an athlete. Uh, and then if you have a, a student, like all of my students, in fact, my oldest daughter went to school as a, a student athlete and she came in as a coach of gymnastics, you know, having gotten all her certification prior to finishing high school, you know, her records of what she was doing for sports was important. And so where she placed in, you know, all of those little details that I promise you, you will forget if you don't have a system to writing it down. So we used to keep the little meat paper, you know, the meat booklet. And that Absolutely. was the best way for me to keep up mm -hmm. to what meat and where they placed in, you know, how this meat went and what they did on floor, beam, you know, uh, bars, et cetera. And that's kind of helped me keep up because you need a system. And so when you get ready to tell the story, it's not just all hodgepodge jumbled together. Right. You know, um, you know, you hit a home run at the baseball game where you forget about what game that was and where you were, <laughs> and what city you were in, especially if you're traveling sports mom. Like I know you are Rochelle. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and if you, you know, Brandy Frank mentioned that this was all and it seemed like an intimidating process to pull all this together. But she used a simple Excel spreadsheet that's on the HSLDA website website. So be yeah. sure to check out that HSLDA website because it doesn't have to be that elaborate when you when you do something electronic. There are simple things like Excel, you know, and Excel can be simple and challenging at the same time. But what's it what makes it more uh, which makes it simplified is when somebody has already done the pre-work for you. And so I think that's what you'll find on the HSLDA website. So thank you, Brandy, for that, for that reminder. Yes. And that kind of brings us to a close. I want you to think about your last tip of record keeping as I remind everyone to go to our website at www.hslda.org. And I want you to go to the section where it says, teach my kids slash record keeping. If you do that, you will learn everything. Uh, a lot of the ideas that we are talking about. So Rochelle, in closing, what would you like to share as a tip for all of our listeners? What kind of tip do you want to share in record keeping? How can you encourage them? Absolutely. I would say um, as intimidating as it might feel um, and as much time as it might take, actually spend the time investing in an organizational system. So not just one little tool, but a system that will bring it all together. Because then when you get in the rhythm of homeschooling and actually going through your days, you're just feeding into the system and you don't have to think about, oh, well, where do I put this paper? Where do I? Because that paper becomes overwhelming. And then when somebody asks for something for you, you don't have to work about it. You don't have to worry about it because it's already in your system and you know exactly where to find it. So put your energy into the beginning where you are developing or figuring out what your system is going to be, because it'll save you a lot of time in the end. I love that. That's a great tip. And I think my final tip is I love the basket. You know, a lot of times when you're homeschooling multiple children or even if you have one, um, you have work that you they're working on and you might not be able to take action on right away. So I have this little magic little basket where the kids can just put the items that they want mama to see inside the basket. 
right? So if you want me to check your math later, or if you want me to read over, you know, you have your papers that you've written and you're turning in your homework, if you will, right? Your homeschool homework, you know, <laughs> there's this basket. And so it gives an orderly place to put the things that is in the mom to do box because we're not taking action on everything at the same time. So it gives you a place to kind of stack. And then when I return it, I write notes, it goes into their binder. So it's a system to kind of house management, if you will, of how to manage the things that the students are working on, what they're bringing in from their class, what they want me to see, that I've had a chance to see that goes back to them into their binders, right? And so just having a system is what you said. I think we agree about that. I think between the two of us, we have what, 13 kids, right? That's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so we appreciate you guys all watching today. We hope you learned something about record keeping and that it's just lighter for you, that it's not so much of a burden, but an absolute blessing. And like Dr. Rochelle said, a story that you're telling about your homeschooler. So that may be grandma or your neighbor or your friend, or maybe someone who's looking to homeschool just like you will have the opportunity just to see the beauty of home education because it is such a blessing. So we just Thank you for watching. God bless you. And we hope to see you again. We have some more Facebook Lives and our also our webinars coming up for our HSLDA members. We have all kinds of information as uh, educational resources available for you that you can homeschool. So thank you so much for watching and bye thank for you. now.